Yeah, welcome everybody to the discussion session with the OpenSUSE board. Um, as everybody has noticed, uh, we have this uh, conference this year in a completely new format. Uh, first of all, we have it together with the LibreOffice community. And uh, to my mind, I think this is a, is a big win, really, because uh, not only that both communities are growing together, but there is also much more exchange than if we would just be on the OpenSUSE community or on the LibreOffice community or something like that. Um, then, of course, we have the, the, the case that everything is just virtually and online. Um, we used to have normally a, a board session, a face to face meeting for one or two days before. Uh, this could, of course, not take place. So we have all the preparation done via chats and uh, telegram groups and something like that. And uh, um, This technical format now was a bumpy start yesterday. We had a couple of, of issues, but I must say the technical team has uh, resolved this very, very well. And uh, so a, a big thanks from my and from the board side uh to the to the technical team which was to my understanding mostly consisting of the uh, document foundation people uh that was a really good job thank you very much <clears throat> so my name is Axel Braun my colleagues from the board are with me um so what do we want to do before we have the question and answer session and the discussion with the board I want to talk a little bit about uh our community um, who we are, how many we are, how we are discussing, um, a little wrap up, what has happened since uh, the last uh, OpenSUSE conference, then later question and answers. Uh, my board colleagues are in the discussion, in the talk here as well. If you have uh, any questions, uh, please uh, interrupt. Um, I cannot see the chat bar at the moment because I have the screen shared. <clears throat> so, um, how many are we in the OpenSUSE community? And uh, the clear answer is we don't know. We have an indication, and this is the amount of machines that are accessing our update servers. So these are only numbers that are uh, direct or, or machines that are directly accessing uh, the updates. Of course, we cannot count those machines that are updated via local repositories or local caches or something like that. And here we see we have an approximate number between 250 and 300,000 uh, machines. So this is roughly an indication of the size of the open source community. Um, I guess it will be uh, much higher, but uh, as mostly in with, with, with free software implementations, uh, you cannot tell because there is no obligation to phone, phone home or to sign a contract or something like that. Interesting is if we take a look at the uh, distribution of uh, OpenSUSE releases that we're having and I have here two snapshots from about uh, nearly two years uh, difference. The first one is end of July 2018 and the second one is end of March 2020. Um, <clears throat> so first of all surprising half a year ago we still had machines from the 10.2 release accessing the update. 10.2 uh, was released in December 2006, which is 14 years ago. Uh, I think we didn't have even uh, smartphones, iPhones or something like that at that time. Now Nokia was really a big player. Um, so there have been a, a lot of changes since then. So, but still half a year ago, we had about 16,000 uh, 13.2 machines. Uh, which 13.2, which was released in November 2014, which is six years ago. 
Uh, about half a year ago, we had still around 8,000 machines. One reason may be that this is the last release aside of Tumbleweed that supported the 32-bit architecture. And then, of course, we had uh, or, or the majority of the systems is the release that is up to date at that point in time. Two years ago, it was 42.3. Half year ago, it was 15.1. Uh, and you are probably now asking, oh, half a year ago, why are we not talking about actual figures? Uh, quite simple. In the analysis, uh, the 15.2 machines are not yet considered. So it looks like the amount of users is dramatically going down. But this is, of course, not the case. It's just that 15.2 um, is currently not in the analysis. <clears throat> Um, quite surprising for me, Tumbleweed, uh, we had about 50,000 uh, two years ago. We currently have around 83, uh, 38,000. Um, quite stable, the amount of Tumbleweed users. Um, I have no idea why the number went down. Maybe later on in the discussion, somebody has an indication for that. If we take a look at the box that we're having per system, per release, we can see that the older releases had around 2,200 bucks ish and they are mostly closed. So we have two bars here. The one is the total number of bucks and the other one is the green bar is the one that is the explicit status resolved. And you can see those ones that are out of maintenance, uh, the number of results matches approximately the total number. Uh, for the current leap release, 15.0, 15.1, 15.2, this is not the case. Um, so for these releases that run out of maintenance, like 15.0, there will probably be some um, bug closing session in the coming weeks, similar as we've seen it, that Fedora does it. Um, <clears throat> and that will clear uh, the amount of open box against 15.0. Um, an interesting figure would have been how many box against tumbleweed we're having. Um, actually, I don't know, uh, because I can only query via the Buxilla web front end, and that limits me to about 10,000 uh, records. And I can tell you, we had more than 10,000 uh, bucks in total, and we had as well more than 10,000 resolved. So if there is anybody who has uh, database success and could do a select count star, um, that could maybe provide us with the, with the number of bucks. But here, in, in general, we can see uh, the new leap release um, brought us a, a bump in the number of bucks, but since then it's going down and 15.2 has only a thousand bucks for the moment. I, I bet a, a couple of them will come, but uh, in general, it seems like, it seems like the, the number of bucks is just decreasing. So where do we discuss? Where are our users? <clears throat> So first of all, um, the largest mailing list is not on this paper. Um, the largest amount of subscribers is in the Studio Express list with about 771,000. Um, but curious enough, there is not a single email in that list. So I guess this is the amount of users or respectively the, the, the users that have been subscribed to studio at the time when it was existing and when it was shut down it was migrated to studio express and uh, the subscribers have been been taken over there <clears throat> so the mailing list with the largest amount of users is the security announce and the announce list with 2900 and around 2000 and um then we have from the general list, the project lists, currently around 694 users, which is a plus of 9% compared to a year ago, where I took a look for the first time at, this, uh, at these figures. And the OpenSUSE mailing list currently has about 1,200 users. 
uh, development related uh, factory has currently about 1357 subscribers which is a plus of 15.6 percent of a year ago and cubic which is one of our latest products has around 90 at the moment from the language specific uh, mailing list the two largest lists are the japanese and the german lists and uh, both have uh, gained subscribers as well compared to the year before and i think this is a good indication that in general the open community open SUSE community is growing beside this we have discussion forums like the discord channel uh, we have the forum we have um, uh, we have telegram groups and um, I've taken here just as an example the Discord, which has roughly around a thousand users. Ah, next question How many members in OpenSUSE do we have? Um, and here we are currently 512 OpenSUSE members, which is a plus of 5.4% compared to the year before. And what we try to determine as well is the number of contributors into factory. So here, uh, Simon made an analysis, uh, analyzed all the dot changes files, uh, analyzed them for the um, for the identities that were checking those changes in and we came around that we have approximately 3300 identities contributing into factory um, i'm saying identities because we cannot um, nail this one to one to individuals it seems that some individuals have multiple email addresses so uh, let's take it at 3.3 thousand um, identities who are com contributing to to open source and this is uh, way more than we're having members so that means there is also some room for improvements for those contributors who are actively working on open source to become members So what happened since the last OpenSUSE conference last year in, um, oh, I think it was in May in uh, Nuremberg. First of all, uh, we had a change in the chair, Richard stepped down, uh, Gerald Pfeiffer took over. We had uh, two board elections, one in January and another one in August and the uh, current members of the board you can look up in the open source wiki um we have them on the slide so currently we have in the board vince marina and simon the latest one coming in was stasiak gerald as uh, the board the chair and myself so towards the end of the year we will have another election because the two years uh, board seat is over for marina simon and myself and uh, uh, those ones uh, who have not made a second turn now may go for re-election oh and if if these are not the ones uh, maybe everybody from the community can make up a mind his mind or her mind uh, about individuals who he thinks that uh, should support the board. So what else happened since the last OpenSUSE conference? First of all, we had an Asia summit uh, in October last year in uh, Bali that was a exceptionally well organized uh, event from our Indonesian community. Uh, we had it in the university. Um, the, the rooms were completely crowded. I guess we had a couple of hundred uh, participants there, very many young people as well. And uh, it felt like a, a real good uh, presentation of OpenSUSE and uh, the community behind it. 
For this year, there was already a plan to have the Asia Summit in Delhi. Uh, already early this year, we had to decide that this has to be postponed to 2021 uh, due to the COVID-19 um, problematic. Um, and I think if we look how things are developing at the moment, we probably have to put a question mark behind it and have to see how things really develop, whether we can do uh, a summit next year um, in Delhi or not. One of the last um, meetings that we have, or presence meetings that we have, was the FASTEM uh, in February this year in Brussels. Uh, we had a, a, a big booth. Uh, um, many people from the Open SUSE community were there, and we also had a, a very good feedback. And that was not only because of the build service beer, which uh, we, we handed out for a donation, and we then dedicated this money to the FOSTEM organizer, organizer, organizers um, in, in Brussels. <clears throat> um, Brussels was also a little bit the kickoff for our alignment and networking with the OFE, uh, the Open Forum Europe, that is a not-for-profit uh, think tank, which is based in Brussels. Brussels. And this is um, dedicated to explain the merits of openness to policymakers and politicians. So if you would call it a lobby organization for free and open software, it would probably describe it quite well. And we also aligned, work closely together with the Free Software Foundation Europe. Um, you may have heard the talk from Alexander Sander today about uh, public money, public code, which is a, an idea which we definitely share. <clears throat> then, of course, we had again this getting started issues uh, with uh, the Linux magazine. So they are bundling uh, a, a paper, a magazine with a Leap DVD and explaining how to set it up and so on. This is quite handy as a giveaway for uh, new users, um, especially to, to, to spread the idea and to spread the easiness of use for, for OpenSUSE. What happened on the technical side? Yes, of course, we had some hundred tumbleweed snapshots, ideally seven in a week, which we mostly do not meet, but nevertheless, uh, many, many tumbleweed snapshots. We have released Leap 15.2 a little bit later than planned because uh, there were already the ideas about closing the leap gap and jump. Um, to sum this up again, up to now we had shared the code bases between SLE, the SUSE Linux Enterprise, and the OpenSUSE. And in the future, we want to share uh, the binaries as well. So not only the code, but also the build will be equal between the SLE packages and the OpenSUSE packages. So that will save us in the end a complete uh, code line. Uh, with all the maintenance and so on that is required for that. So the full merge should be done with release 15.3 and uh, an intermediate release, leave 15.2.1 is planned for November, if I remember right. Probably the one or the other has noticed, oh, I needed a new account or I needed to, to log in again in a slightly different infrastructure. Yes, we had a significant change in our infrastructure. So mainly those areas where SUSE has carved out from Microsoft uh, Focus and open SUSE from SUSE with the impact that the forums, for example, have been migrated to Nuremberg. We have all the migration of the accounts, which were still with Microfocus before, to the SUSE infrastructure and the migration of the mailing list uh, have been started. So we will get new mailing lists set up uh, very soon. And this would have not been possible without the incredible work of the heroes, 
where I would like really send a big thank you to the Heroes team. They did really an incredible work. And it, to my understanding, it, I feel it, it went very smooth. Thank you. Yeah, what has the board done additionally? We are working on getting more openness and getting more transparency into that. Uh, one of the major improvements here was that we have a new feature request process so that we now can submit feature risks, uh, requests for SLEE products as well, which was up to that point in time only possible for SUSE employees. And now we will have this for non-SUSE employees as well. Um, the foundation initiative, which we already started discussing years ago and getting more in, in depth in the face-to-face -face meetings last year, was announced at the project list. We left out most of the interim steps, but came up with the idea to say, let's have a, a foundation set up for OpenSUSE. Um, because it has various advantages and here it was quite interesting to hear an hour ago how Fedora is set up. They are in a similar situation as we have it now. Uh, OpenSUSE is backed up by SUSE. Uh, Fedora is backed up by Red Hat, it's respectively IBM, so this is an even larger sponsor. And uh, as the presenter said, yeah, it has pros and cons, uh, same as we see it here as well. So we have announced this in the project list and by intention we hadn't been following up on that to see how this is being picked up by the community and um, here we have to re how to say revive this a little bit uh, because there was shortly a little bit discussion and then uh, it, it it faded out but uh, definitely it needs some distinct people to drive uh, this discussion and to drive the development. Um, I, we feel that this should not be driven exclusively by the board. So everybody who wants to help here should, uh, should step up. Yeah, with this, I would like to hand over to the OpenSUSE chair. Uh, yeah, chair, <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, we are preparing for preparing for um, this session. I was actually thinking, and I realized, in some ways, I'm the new kid on the block. I've been I've been engaged with uh, OpenSUSE from day zero, from what I remember, e even before. Um, but the last years, mostly as a user, filing bug reports, and not not intricately with the, the insights of the project, like the mailing lists um, and, and all those discussions. And so I figured I shared some of, of the fresher experiences. The, the first thing, <laughs> I, I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised how other people were surprised is actually the chair role is, um, subject to interpretation. Um, I think many people apparently, at least within SUSE or sometimes outside, me maybe less on the open SUSE side, um, tend to think the chair is something like a C CEO or CIO. And I can tell you I had more escalations sometimes around IT stuff when we had to carve out than our own CIO probably. Uh, it's not the CFO, it's not the CMO. I mean, the closest uh, it sometimes feels is the chief escalation officer, which would actually fit into into CEO. Um, but really, it's an interesting role, and, and Richard truly can can attest to that, because there is um, all sorts of expectations, and um, the only way you can lead is um, is not by is not by direct authority. Um, that said, uh, next slide, please. Um, it's an interesting role and it, it gave me definitely a lot more insights into OpenSUSE. Um, and the first thing I realized is, re is really there is a richness and variety and diversity in OpenSUSE 
that I would argue very few people actually are aware of. Um, certainly outside of um, of that community or communities. And there is a tremendous amount of passion. Now, sometimes this passion leads to a lot of arguing. You know, when you have passionate people on, on several sides of an argument, that can become very heated. That's not always super um, constructive. There is a lot of openness, I found. Um, not necessarily always on the mailing lists. On the mailing lists, when you have arguments and sometimes even inertia, but engaging with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, or in smaller groups in particular, that's where I, you know, when whenever I had that, um, I experienced a lot of openness and willingness to engage and willingness to to share and help and, and, and also listen. Um, and really, Open SUSE, one of the things that, that struck me in general is, is a deep sense of collaboration. Um, and open source is tricky. I've been doing open source. Well, I started with free software because open source didn't exist back then. Uh, but I've been doing free software open source for more than two decades. Um, and open source is one of definitely one of the more complex projects that, that I'm aware of. Um, for many reasons, it's the geography, it's just the complexity of the different, uh, of, of a Linux distribution, but then all the tools uh, that are part of OpenSUSE or that are affiliated with OpenSUSE and the, and the different communities and uh, increasingly things above and beyond Linux, uh, which, which makes this very interesting, very rich, but also means as OpenSUSE evolves, we need to step up. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and, you know, stepping up in terms of the infrastructure and, and really, as Axel mentioned, the last year with all the carve out SUSE from Microfocus on the IT side, OpenSUSE from SUSE to, to a very good extent, um, that definitely has happened. But it also means things like GDPR, um, as we move towards a foundation, probably um, things like finance, things like having uh, even more elaborate election rules, because uh, as we realized this last year, there is there's corner points that we corner cases that we actually um, had not fully covered, like what happens when, you know, what happens when the board is involved in a conflict, then the board can hardly arbitrate the, the conflict directly, um, etc. So there has been good progress. Now, would I have wished for things to be smoother? Absolutely. Would I have wished for things to be faster um, and, and farther than, um, than they actually materialized over the last 12 months? Absolutely. But there has been progress. The one thing um, I believe, and I thought about this, what is the one thing I really want to suggest to all of us um, is related to islands. Next slide. As we have the, you now we have those different um, sub projects, the different groups and the be it language, geographies, interests, um, technologies, projects, etc. Um, and in a way, those are like islands. And, and that can be a very nice thing. I mean, Indonesia is a, is a country that exists of thousands of islands. Still, it is one country. Um, what sometimes I'm missing is, is the connection and is communications between these islands. And I, I want to be very clear, I'm not proposing to, to use tons and tons of concrete and pour them between all those islands so that it becomes one big island and you know one completely consistent and 100% connected um, and same, same island. That, that's, not, that's not what I think will be healthy for the project. But sometimes I'm wondering, you know, can we use 
megaphones or messages in a bottle or bridges or little planes or boats to communicate more between some of those it's i believe we could we could benefit as a as a project or as projects plural and as a community or as communities plural if we were to share more share more of our accomplishments share more of our needs share um more of um what we're planning to do etc um i have no and i don't have this recipe where i'm saying okay here is the seven steps here is the schedule um but i'm i'm putting out the idea or the really the request is too strong i guess it's the, the suggestion for us to find ways to to become even better stronger in communicating and when i say communicating that's internally as i mentioned but also externally i think we we have some very good activities this conference is one um we are on social media um many of those media actually and and there's there's local events uh there is people attending conferences on behalf of open suse um there is members and and others helping newbies so there's a lot going on but i i still think we we could be even more we could even do previous slide please we could we could even do more in in sharing in particular of our accomplishments and and partly communicating working together with other project uh, projects so ramping up communications parenthesis even farther further um, is one thing and the other thing that i noticed is many of us have an engineering background and much of what we do uh, this being an open source project resolves around code one way or the other and reviews of code and you know when you review code when you review a patch you try to find mistakes because even an off by one error can be a security issue um, or a corner case can lead to the thing crashing but that's about code and when it comes to human interaction there's something i felt and and it actually has a name as i learned <laughs> recently um is the principle of charity and what the principle of charity says is actually assume the best interpretation of people's arguments so when you have an argument on the mailing list or in person don't try to find the weak spots I mean, don't ignore them if they are there, if they are problematic, but don't focus necessarily on the weak spots. Try to find what the other person actually is trying to do, is trying to relate to you, even if in the argumentation or what he or she says, there is an off by one error or is something, you know, I don't agree with. And so that's, um, I was planning to 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 send a note to the project list. Um, I'll I'll dig out some references and and still do that. But that's that's really one thing that I I feel ramping up communications even more, but also slightly um, adjusting how we communicate. That that really can bring us. Um, into the next into the next 15 years and and help our journey there um yeah and that that was my brief excursion with that axel now you can go to the um next slide please um i'd like to open the floor i believe i've seen all all board members uh, and a fair number of other um people i know by name here on the chat and um in the session so please shoot ahead and ask any questions or make any comments either live or in in the chat yeah thank you Gerald. yeah discussion is open
I think you can stop sharing this. Yeah. So I'm going to be the adventurous one here and ask the first question. Uh, <laughs> so, Gerald, now that you are the Open SUSE chairman, and you know this is sort of your thing to be, for better or worse, kind of the face of Open SUSE. Um, my my concern has been for a little while now. Uh, you know, just not from you, but from your predecessors and stuff. The the lack of visibility of Open SUSE to the greater uh, community, like people don't uh, like. What do you what do you plan to do, or what do you want to do to 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 try to bring some more visibility to Open SUSE so that people will know that we exist as a community and that you know users will come and users will turn into contributors and we can sustain ourselves going forward because that's been my chief worry for a little while now with, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. how things have been going. Um, so to answer is I don't I don't see the chair person i i call myself chair chair person or chair human not chairman usually um i don't see the chair necessarily as the the, fa the face of open suse um i mean he or she certainly is one face and and maybe one of the more more accessible or prominent faces um but all members and in fact others should not be shy of of um representing OpenSUSE. Mm -hmm. To be very clear, that's not me pushing away responsibility. Um, that's just to invite everyone um, and, and not make this an exclusive gig. Um, I can and I, I plan actually on doing, I can do and plan on doing more. Um, I mean, I started the little amount of tweeting. Um, actually, I, I increased that. Um, it's, it's about tweeting, it's about interviews. Um, I mean, one thing that my role at SUSE gives me access to is, is the press. Um, and, and that's where I, I tend to bring in and up open SUSE quite a bit in interviews when, um, you know, whether, whether that's a topic that was originally requested or not, but I try to weave in open SUSE. Right. Um, what, would be helpful for me and that's actually the, the point about communications if you and it's you know everyone who contributes something to open suse if you help and feed me with by sharing cool things that you do um then i can share those things in those interviews or other um you know internally when we when we will get prob probably um, U.S. government approval pending, uh, we will get those new colleagues from Rancher. Um, that will allow me to share more, right? Um, so part of part of my request for communications is let's make sure more of us know more of the good things and the cool things that we do, so that we can share them more. Yeah, as said, Neil, uh, we've started a networking part uh, in the Open Forum Europe uh, regular calls and, and mailing lists. There are many, many users from other open source projects, but as well from industry, including IBM, Red Hat and something like that. Um, <clears throat> so that, of course, raises the visibility. And uh, We've also worked on our connections to media. So I had a longer discussion with an editor from the German CT magazine, uh, explaining him the advantages of, of OpenSUSE. And uh, he finally wrote at least uh, uh, an article about Leap 15.2. And it was surprising in that way, because up to now, uh, the CT magazine knows only Ubuntu, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're they're very uh, resistant to what OpenSUSE. We, we are working here on that to to get it get a little bit more visibility. All right. That's good yeah. to know. Thank you, all, both of you. Yeah, as as Gerard said, 
uh, basically every community member can feed us with information but as well start tweeting and using social media and uh, 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 is, is, is private environment or whatever um, to, to, to spread uh, the word about OpenSUSE. I think that another point is to interact uh, more uh, with uh, other projects, uh, other community, like uh, we are doing, uh, for example, uh, for uh, for this conference uh, with the LibreOffice one, because yeah. it's uh, it's really normal to have uh, several community members that are in uh, all uh, these communities, and uh, the, the link is uh, is it's already there. We, we <clears throat> should just uh, uh, use it and uh, push it a bit more. And maybe we could get uh, uh, better interactions and, uh, yeah, also better uh, contributions. I mean, I'm just thinking, for example, to uh, the tools uh, that we are sharing uh, uh, with uh, Fedora or also with uh, with LibreOffice, and we can uh, just uh, grow all together, uh, just learning uh, each other what the others are doing. That's awesome. I read a question. What is the board's opinion on expanding representation on the board where is fully representative of the global community? Let I don't me, understand that question. <laughs> but, uh, let me let me take that question. I think yeah. I think the question is around the fact that most of our board members are in Europe, and I would strongly encourage in the next upcoming election people from all our different communities to consider nominating and running from the board, or if you're part of a community in a region and you think someone else would be really good on the board, I'd encourage you to speak to them and try and get them to nominate. Because I think it's something we can improve because we have a very... I know personally I've spent a lot of time with our community in Asia, and I would really like it if more of them actually ran for the board so we could have a bigger, more diverse community running. Hey guys, I was about to say the same thing, but I think Simon just uh, highlighted those. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Ish, I'm from the Elections Committee, and I would like to, to add some, uh, some information uh, to answer the question. Uh, we, the guys from the Elections Committee, we do have a lot of trouble to get candidates for the board. So here again, I make a request to you for the next election, if you want to see a, the global community being represented on the board, the first thing that you can do is present yourself as a candidate, or if you cannot, at least nominate somebody in the from the local community so that we can, you know, uh, at least see in the board that we have people from around the world, from the different continents, from different places, different cultures. And uh, yeah. That would be my part uh, on this. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, um, the question came up on, on time zones. Time zones um, should not be a factor. I mean, obviously, it will be a factor, but should, should not be a blocker. We have this, uh, this strange Aussie here, which means we have board meetings late evenings, German time or European time or early mornings European time. Um, I mean, Hawaii probably, so Hawaii or French Polynesia might be might be really tricky. But but apart from that, um, North America or other parts of Asia um, wouldn't, wouldn't and shouldn't cause challenges. Yeah, but this is something that we have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, and we rotate in um, I mean, one one question that I thought when I heard heard the question is, should we, you know, have dedicated board seats per geo or so? But that's also that's also tricky, um, tricky to pull off, you know. 
so I think the the first thing I would I, I really think we should do is encourage and support um, behind the scenes maybe um, people from from other regions and geos. Yeah. Right now we have two Germans on the board if I if I'm counting correctly. Two Germans but five Europeans. So definitely yeah. <laughs> not very distributed. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I asked the question, but I, I'm like, I don't want to wake up my wife, you know. <laughs> so, but, but, but you know, the, 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 what I'm what I'm looking at is really, you're all answering answering it like you know. I mean, it's obvious we we all just want to be represented. We want we want the community to grow, and it doesn't matter where it is on the globe. It's just sometimes you feel like. You know, how, how, how can we move that forward? How can we, mm. um, it, it, it's just, it's one of those things that from my side, I see it and I go, you know, we have this community here, this community here, and how do we bring that together? And that, that's, that's, that's really a, the hard, it, it's a hard answer. I've, I've, I've got a bit of an opinion with that. If, if you don't mind me throwing in my two cents to the whole thing. Like, I think part of the problem is like we talked about earlier, like misunderstanding of what the role of the board is. Like if you see the board as, you know, representing the face of the community, or if you see the board as, as you know, leading the project, then I think, yeah, there's a real problem with the board not being as diverse as the community is. But if you see the board as it's chartered to be, you know, as a conflict broker and, you know, troubleshooter, you know, chaos managers, then you know the you know the rep the issue of representation is something that all of our communities can already do you know our you know all of our community you know all of our communities in america in the americas you know in asia they can step up and represent the community now as if they were in the board anyway they don't need to be on the board to do that um so so i, I both kind of get it the problem and not like you know like I know people see the board in that way, therefore there wants to be the representation there, but I think that's actually part of the problem. I think the board isn't made to do that. If it if it is, then like look at the talk that we had from from Ben today. Like yeah, if if that is kind of the role of the board, then we need to have something that's way bigger, way more like the Fedora arrangement, where you do have designated people there for designated roles and you know you have a couple of elected roles in there and that's a totally different <clears throat> scope charter election process appointment process blah 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 I'm not saying it's either better or worse just from what we have right now i i yeah that's my view anyway i think some of the misalignment here at least from someone outside looking in until you know richard um helpfully explained it to me over beers one night um uh the the misalignment here is that uh where the board when people perceive how the board is chartered you know as richard said it's chartered to essentially be dispute resolution final arbiters for um for people and such uh, they feel that in order for that to be successful there has to be cultural representation um, across the communities that actually OpenSUSE is in so that this kind of stuff, you know, works out a little bit more effectively. Because, of course, when you're talking about people and, you know, let's say uh, someone from India uh, has a problem with someone from Germany and, and there's nobody who understands the Indian guy's point of view, then it might not, it might go badly. And so it, even if we're talking about specifically in the role that the board is chartered to do, to be the arbiter of the trademarks, to be arbiter of conflict resolution, things like that, I think people feel like it should be in some ways culturally representative so that um, that function actually can work as intended. Not that it's not working well as it is now, but I think some people feel that it, it, that it can't because of the lack of representation across communities. Again, not saying whether it is 
right or wrong, that's, I think, where the underlying perception is. By the way, I just want to throw this in. You know, I, I don't know if any of you watch Cobra Kai, you know, like Karate Kid stuff, but it's awesome to actually actually see the other side of the story there. And no one, like my generation growing up, never got that, right? So, like, we always took uh, Ralph Macchio's point of view and that he was a good guy. But, you know, uh, different points of view really make it really make a difference in, in conflict resolution, so. Yeah. Uh, True. Um, maybe we should start this this time around. We should actually start earlier for the election and and invite people to think about standing and, and offer being, you know, I'm sure s several of the people here would, would be willing to one, have one-on-one -on -one conversations if anyone has questions on the board or open suicide, how it is to be on the board um, and put that out to, to possibly yeah. encourage. We should actually be starting that process in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, geez, that's yes, right. So if we if we want to if we want to run the election on time for the first time in <laughs> the first time in as long as I can ever remember, like yeah, you know. I was gonna say I don't think I've ever seen the big run on time. <laughs> I think I think Ishi's hair is just starting to <laughs> to stand up know. steeply. I don't know all if for reasons but... not in, under Ishi's control. You should do a fantastic job, as do the rest of He looks a little shocked. <laughs> nah, but... Ish worked really hard this year. <laughs> or, or we could just fix the process so that it doesn't mention the new board should start on the 1st of January. Oh, well, I mean, now we're talking about redoing the charter. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a bigger... Yeah, problem. change the charter, then you have an election about changing the charter, and then you can have your election. So it'll be oh, the 1st of January 2027. <laughs> oh, God, I have been I have been in a different organization, community organization, where we had to change the charter to make the election happen. Because I think it specified it had to be in... It had two conflicting things about when the election should happen, so we had to have a special meeting to change the charter. Oh, my so that we God, could run the election. that's terrible. I would say it's the year to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, if everything else is going to happen, we might as well do this too, right? <laughs> Thank you, Richard. We're now apparently going to change everything. Yay! Yeah. Can, can we have the election date for one of those elections, like on the same as that one in like three weeks' time in America? Just, just no, to really no, confuse no, people. No. Oh, Sorry, no. Richard, you can oh. it. No. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't you dare ruin Ish over this. I I like Ish. <laughs> I, I think Richard only only is saying that because he knows Ish cannot simply jump on the plane uh, and hit him for for the next couple of months probably. Yeah, but there's going to be some time I fly back to Mauritius and then like I'll get off the plane and it'll just be. <laughs> I, I think you deserve it, Richard. I do. I totally do. Any any other thoughts, questions? Seems like everybody's reminiscing about their start in Open Sousa in the chat. <laughs> yeah, all those youngsters. <laughs> I have so many more gray hairs than when I started at Open Sousa. <laughs> hey, I joined Open Sousa right when the turmoil started with Attachmate and Novell just deciding, you know, we're going to um, do stuff. Oh, those, um, were the, those were the fun years. 
Were they? I I feel like those were the opposite of fun years. I had a whole like fork ready to go. Like those were fun years. Lupus actually has a rail seven or or so box on his desk. Wait a minute. You have a thing that's not supposed to exist, Lubosh? Uh, no, it's Rails 6 because I started as Rails 6 ah. drawing. So I didn't, <laughs> it was DTS and then RHCL, but I got it. Let me find it. I have it here. But it's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's the Hammer it Core. <laughs> oh, Maybe yeah, one I, I have no. that one, Simon. I have that one. <laughs> But and it's actually, in Italy, unfortunately. So, so yeah. I'm not sure if Rust 7 still had like gold masters, you know, like physical copies, but I think that it didn't. So, this could be the last one. Is there still a plastic wrap I'm, around it? Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. It's, that's a plastic you know, wrap. It's a legendary wow, copy. <laughs> of course, you can't open it. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. I, I've got a back in the office in Nuremberg, I've got a, a legendary. Sousa 6 box in the plastic still. I'm pretty sure it's propping my let my monitor up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have a thing. I got something from the Swedish novel in a box. <clears throat> yeah, but the thing is, like, I had a, I had a, a an open Sousa 10 point something one, and and like it was just like a couple of like a centimeter or so like too low, and the 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 Sousa 6 one was like just a bit thicker. So it worked out really nice. Yeah, unless I got this number two, but not in a box. But... Oh yes, Bitten is showing us, I think that's 10 2. Yep, 10 2. That's I got I think... some from a guy that's from Swedish Novell when I updated <laughs> from like 10 1. I... If I still had an old Swedish Linux community. Yeah, as we learned, it was released in two thousand six. <laughs> if I still, if I still had access to my office, I'd show you my uh, Novell uh, Souza brain share hat that a colleague of mine uh, and I got. You know, in two thousand and ten, eleven or so, like I was helping him in the university systems, and he went to brain share, came back, and gave me a hat, and and so I have a Novell branded Souza brain share hat. <laughs> it's a set copyright 2006 novel ink yeah you know what i was responsible for the i was the, the project lead for the underlying sles version oh. <laughs> yeah. we used back then we used to linux and 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 open SUSE kind of the betas when sles started the release candidate phase we would do we would do a SUSE linux Talk, talking about Novell brain share, I have I have my Novell speaker shirt from like the last brain share, and I, I loved the irony of like return, and then it never did. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was back when I had long hair, and I was hanging out with two other people with long hair, and like a random woman just walked up as a, walked up to us and goes, "Are you the Linux guys?" And we looked to each other like, "Yeah, I guess we do stand out compared to everybody else here." You also have in your picture from those times, you are wearing the gaudiest sunglasses, polarized sunglasses I have ever seen in my entire life. What, the green ones? No, the green ones with the, with the yellow uh, tints on the eyes. <laughs> I don't I remember think... them. Maybe I guess I just put that out of my memory. Maybe, Maybe for a reason. Know. It yeah. helps your OpenSUSE Connect profile still has that picture. No. <laughs> yes. No, it can't. He's yep. got to clean the cash. Seriously? Take, okay, take a, take, take a screenshot before Richard can actually change it. Go, go, go run. <laughs> take a screenshot. No, no, it, the, the, our brown oh. SUSE has my usual headshot. What did I... It, Oh my god, those, yeah. <laughs> I have, like, They're not bloody, I've still got it. them. They're cool. Or is something and then don't fish. Diss my, don't diss my nice sunglasses. Did, did anybody see 
how many years before it actually happened, Sousa already knew about COVID-19? <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> oh, jeez, no. It's it's not even my starter box. By the way, for those who didn't see it, this is the Richard I'm talking about. Ah, uh, <laughs> with the biker glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Totally you, you're, you're looking more as you're acting in Sons of Anarchy or something like that. Ah, uh, come on, come on. <laughs> uh, who called this long hair? <laughs> this Look, is not I, long I think hair. The long hair might have gone, but I've still got the sunglasses, all right? It's not long hair, Richard. <laughs> it's not long hair. I mean, Richard, the, does the dude at OpenSUSA.org still work for you? The dude at OpenSUSA.org still works for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it does. Oh, we see. Uh, where is Richard with the glasses? Uh, put off the glasses, man. It looks grow really your... cool with the whole like screen reflecting in them. Uh, like, I'll, yeah. I'll grow your hair instantly. Nah, the two I, don't gonna... match. I'll just keep the glasses. Now, these, these are my cycling glasses when it's sunny. So, like, I'm not going to wear them again for a year, like six months. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're about to go in for eye surgery. Who, oh, me? No, Richard. Richard. For eye surgery? I mean, because, like, it, that, or you've just come out of eye surgery. That's probably a better way to describe it. Am I listening to Neil Gompa again? Yes, you are listening to me, Nerf. Good night, Ignis. <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs> okay. Thanks just, for putting up with this random segue. Just, just for the record, are are there any other questions, <laughs> or is 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 the beer session sliding in, or whatever drink session? I think, that, I think we've, we've gone officially into beer session.